We've been digging deep into three articles all about Redbubble, trying to answer that big question, is it the right platform for you? Exactly. So let's uh, let's get this show on the road. First things first. What exactly is Redbubble? Imagine like um, imagine Etsy. Okay. But instead of, you know, handmade crafts and vintage stuff, it's your art on, well, pretty much anything you can think of. Right. T-shirts, phone cases, even those shower curtains. You know, the ones with like the really specific designs that make you do a double take. Exactly. That's the beauty of print on demand. Redbubble handles all the production, the printing, the shipping. You just focus on creating awesome art. So it's like hands-free art selling. Pretty much. And one of the cool things about Redbubble is the community aspect. There are forums where artists connect, share tips, even collaborate on designs. Oh, wow. That's cool. It's like a built-in support system for your art business. Exactly. But it's important to be realistic, too. Redbubble isn't some magical money tree. It takes work, consistency, and, you know, a bit of marketing magic to make it work. Speaking of marketing magic, mm -hmm. uh, how do artists even get their art noticed on a platform as huge as Redbubble? That's the million dollar question, and we've got some answers for you coming up. Ooh, cliffhanger. Yeah. All right, well, we'll get to that soon. But first, let's talk money, honey, <laughs> because realistically, <laughs> we want to make sure it's actually profitable to sell on Redbubble, right? Absolutely. Let's break down those numbers. So Redbubble has a base price for each product. This covers their production costs, you know, the actual making of the product and the shipping. Right. Okay, so. On top of that, you add your markup and that's your profit. But of course, Redbubble takes a cut too. How much are we talking? 20% commission. Okay. So 20% on every sale. Yep. It's definitely something to factor in when you're setting your prices. Okay. So let's say I've poured my heart and soul into creating this masterpiece. It's like digital art, you know. Yeah. What do I need to do to get it Redbubble ready? Good question. First off, you got to make sure your file is high resolution. We're talking PNG or JPEG, ideally between 150 and 300 DPI. DPI. This ensures your art looks crisp and clear on all those different products. Makes sense. No pixelated masterpieces allowed. Exactly. And Redbubble has specific dimensions for different products, so make sure your art fits those guidelines. They wouldn't just like stretch or shrink my design to fit, would they? Well, they do have some resizing options, but it's always best to start with the correct dimensions. They have these handy templates on their site. Templates. Okay, good to know. So what about actually editing the art itself? Should I go crazy with the filters, add a bunch of special effects? Think of it this way. You want your art to look just as amazing on a phone case as it does on your computer screen, right? All right. So, yeah, enhancing colors, adjusting the contrast, those are all good things. Okay, I can do that. And what about removing the background? Is that a thing? It can be. It really depends on your design. If it makes sense to have a transparent background, then go for it. So, like, if I'm selling a logo or something. Exactly. Got it. Okay, so my art is edited. It's the right size. It's looking sharp. Now what? Now comes the fun part, marketing. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the dreaded M word. I know, right? But it doesn't have to be scary. Easy for you to say. You're like a marketing guru. Hey, everyone starts somewhere. One of the best things you can do is tap into your existing networks. Like my mom. Hey, if your mom is your biggest fan, then absolutely. But also friends, family, social media followers. So like word of mouth marketing. Exactly. Those early supporters can make a huge difference. Okay. Word of mouth check. But Redbubble itself is a marketplace. How do I stand out from the crowd? Think about it like this. You're setting up a virtual stall at a massive art fair. You want your stall to be the one everyone flocks to, right? Okay, yeah, I get it. So high quality images of your designs are crucial, but it's also about those product descriptions. But, ah, right, those little blurbs of text. Don't underestimate their power. Tell a story, share your inspiration, use humor. So like, Channel my inner comedian. Exactly. And make people remember you. Make them want to see more of your work. Okay, I can do that. Now, what about those social media strategies you teased earlier? Ah, uh, yes. Social media is like this whole other universe for marketing your art. Tell me everything. Think about it. People are scrolling through their feeds, probably bombarded with ads and perfectly curated lives. Your art needs to break through that noise. Think outside the static image. Instagram Reels are a goldmine for artists. Reels, okay. Showcase your designs on actual products. Well, like a little fashion show, but with mugs and tote bags. Exactly. Or collaborate with art influencers on TikTok. Reach out to those with a following that aligns with your style. Okay, influencer marketing. Got it. And don't forget hashtags. They're like those invisible threads connecting your art to the people who are searching for it. Hashtags, right. I always forget about those. 
Think like a buyer. Hmm. What would you search for if you were looking for a design like yours? Hmm. Good point. So we're talking targeted hashtags, eye-catching visuals, and maybe even some influencer collabs. It sounds like marketing on Redbubble requires a multi-pronged approach. You got it. It's not just one thing. It's about finding what works for you and your art. Okay, so we've talked about what Redbubble is, how much it costs, and even how to market our art once it's up there. Yeah. But I know some listeners might be thinking, okay, Redbubble sounds cool, but what about other platforms? And that's a valid question. There are a ton of options out there for artists these days. So how do you know which one is right for you? That's where things get interesting. Let's compare Redbubble to a few of its competitors, shall we? Oh, yeah. Bring on the competition. First up, we've got Printful. Printful, okay. Now, Printful is a bit different. Oh, so. It's not a marketplace like Redbubble. With Redbubble, you upload your designs and they handle everything else. Right. Printful is more of a print-on-demand service. Oh, yeah, I'm following. You create your designs and connect Printful to your own online store, like on Etsy or Shopify. When someone places an order, Printful handles the printing and shipping. So more control, but also more work on my end. Exactly. It depends on how hands-on you want to be. Got it. Okay, so Redbubble is all about convenience. What about Printful? What's their claim to fame? Printful is known for its high-quality apparel printing. Oh, really? Yeah, their t-shirts and hoodies are top-notch. Good to know. Right. But you mentioned they have a more limited product range. Yeah, they focus mainly on apparel. So if I'm looking to put my art on, like, phone cases and throw pillows... Redbubble might be a better bet. Makes sense. Okay, next up on our list of Redbubble contenders, we have Fine Art America. And as the name suggests, it's got a very different vibe. How so? It's geared towards, well, fine art. Okay, so like paintings, photography, that sort of thing. Exactly. They offer high-quality prints, framing options, even canvases. Fancy. So if Redbubble is like the cool indie art fair, Fine Art America is the sophisticated uptown gallery. You got it. And the pricing structure is different, too. Fill me in. Redbubble takes that 20% commission we talked about earlier. Fine Art America operates on a membership model. Membership, huh? Yeah. You pay a monthly or yearly fee, and that gives you access to certain features. And what about setting prices? You have more control over your prices with Fine Art America. So potentially higher profit margins. Exactly. But it's also important to factor in those membership fees. Right. It's all a balancing act. Okay, last but not least, we have Society6. Ah, Society6. They've really carved out their own niche in the home decor market. Home decor, okay. Yeah, think like throw pillows, wall tapestries, duvet covers, that kind of thing. So if I'm looking to make my art part of someone's home... Society6 is definitely worth checking out. Cool. So... Similar target audience to Fine Art America, but with its own unique flavor. Exactly. They tend to have a more curated selection with a focus on design-forward pieces. Okay, so it's like the trendy younger sibling of Fine Art America. Something like that. But one thing to keep in mind is that Society6 is very U.S.-centric. Their main audience is in the U.S., and their products are mostly produced and shipped from there. So if I'm an international artist, or if I'm hoping to sell to a global audience... It's something to consider. Got it. So we've got Redbubble, Printful, Fine Art America, and Society6. All these different platforms, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, it's overwhelming. It can be. But that's why we're here to break it down for you. True that. Now let's talk about something that's crucial for any artist selling their work online. Print quality. Ah, yes. The million dollar question. Because what good is amazing art if it ends up looking like blurry or faded on the final product. Exactly. And with print on demand, you're not always in control of that final step. Which is a little scary, to be honest. I get it. So with Redbubble, they use digital printing. Digital printing. Which is great for capturing detail and vibrant colors. Especially for digital art, right? Exactly. But here's the thing. Redbubble doesn't handle all the printing in-house. They don't? Nope. They work with a network of suppliers. Okay, so like different printing companies all over the world. Exactly, which gives them that global reach, which is awesome. Right, I get that. But it also means that the print quality can vary depending on the supplier and the product. So like one t-shirt might look amazing. And the next one might be a little underwhelming. Ugh, that's frustrating. I know. It's one of those things that can be a bit of a gamble with Redbubble. So what's the solution? How do you avoid ending up with a less than stellar print. Research is key. Yeah. Before you put your heart and soul into designing for a specific product, read those customer reviews. Pay attention to what people are saying about the print quality. 
So if I see a bunch of reviews saying the colors are faded on a certain type of phone case. Maybe steer clear of that one. Good advice. Yeah. And what about ordering samples? Is that a thing? Absolutely. It's like a test drive for your art. Love that analogy. Okay, so we've covered print quality, which is obviously super important. But another thing that's often on artists' minds is ownership. Ah, yes. The age-old question. Who owns what when it comes to art in the digital age? Exactly. So let's break it down. If I upload my art to Redbubble, do they own it? Short answer, no. Okay, good. You retain the copyright to your artwork. Always. Always. Phew, that's reassuring. But I'm guessing it's not quite that simple, is it? You're right. There are some nuances. Like what? By uploading your art to Redbubble, you're granting them a non-exclusive license. Non-exclusive license. Okay, hold on. Break that down for me. Think of it like this. You're lending Redbubble your artwork so they can make copies of it. Okay, that makes sense. But you still own the original artwork. So I can still sell it elsewhere. Exactly. You're not signing away your artistic soul to Redbubble. Okay, good to know. But I'm guessing there's some specifics within those terms of service that artists should be aware of. Oh, absolutely. Always, always read the fine print. Yep. It's crucial to understand the agreement you're entering into. Makes sense. So if I'm not entirely sure about something, or if I have any doubts, it's never a bad idea to consult with a lawyer who specializes in copyright law. Solid advice. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this first part of our Redbubble deep dive. From what it is and isn't, to costs, marketing strategies, and even legal considerations. We've only just scratched the surface. Oh, I know. But don't worry, we've got two more parts to this deep dive, and trust me, they're juicy. So we've talked about the different platforms out there like Redbubble, Printful, Fine Art America, Society6. But let's zoom in on Redbubble for a sec. Okay, back to our main squeeze. Exactly. Let's say someone somewhere in the world falls head over heels for your art. They click that buy now button. Cha-ching. <laughs> the sound every artist loves to hear. But uh, where is that masterpiece actually shipping from? That's the cool part. Redbubble has these fulfillment centers all over the globe. Okay. So if someone in, I don't know, London buys your quirky cat mug... <laughs> The one with the monocle and the tiny top hat. You know it. Chances are that mug is shipping from somewhere closer to them. So not all the way from Redbubble HQ in, what is it, Australia? Exactly. It's all about efficiency and making sure those art lovers get their fix as quickly as possible. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here, but I feel like we've only scratched the surface of what it means to be a Redbubble artist. We have, and that's what's so fascinating about it. It's not just about uploading designs and hoping for the best. It's about understanding the platform, the process, the legalities. And, of course, the emotional side of putting your art out there for the world to see. Oh, yes. The emotional roller coaster of being an artist in the digital age. That's a whole other deep dive waiting to happen. Okay, so we've talked about the nitty gritty of Redbubble, the technical stuff, the legal stuff. But let's be real. Putting your art out there for the world to see... It's a vulnerable thing. It is. It's like you're sharing a piece of yourself and you hope people will, you know, get it. Exactly. And hopefully, you know, buy it too. Well, yeah, that's the dream, right? Of course. So how do you handle that emotional roller coaster? Well, those early wins are huge. It's like validation that you're on the right track. Totally. But I'm guessing it's not always smooth sailing. Definitely not. One of the biggest challenges, I think, is managing expectations. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. You know, you see those success stories online and you think, that's going to be me. I'm going to be an overnight sensation. Right. But that almost never actually happens. Exactly. Building a sustainable creative business takes time. Okay. So patience is key. Absolutely. And resilience. Because there are going to be those days, right? Oh, yeah. Days when you're like, what am I even doing with my life? Been there. <laughs> so how do you stay motivated when those doubts creep in? For me, it's about celebrating the small wins. Okay. I like that. Did you get a positive comment on a new design? Did your social media post get more engagement than usual? Those are all wins. Yeah, you're right. It's easy to overlook those little victories. Exactly. It's all about shifting your perspective. So instead of focusing on the things that aren't happening. You focus on the things that are happening. I can dig it. It's like choosing to see the good stuff. Exactly. And speaking of good stuff, let's talk about the creative process itself. Yes. Because... How do you stay inspired when it feels like you're constantly designing, optimizing, promoting? It's, ah, the dreaded creative burnout. 
it happens to all of us. Tell me about it. So what's the antidote? For me, it's about carving out time for those just for me projects. Okay, like what kind of projects? Anything that brings you joy. Maybe you experiment with a new medium or revisit an old hobby. The point is to create something without any pressure. No algorithms, no profit margins, just pure creativity. Exactly. It's like hitting the reset button on your brain. I love that. And who knows, maybe those just-for-fun projects will spark new ideas for your Redbubble shop. Exactly. It's all connected. So we've covered a lot of emotional ground here. But if someone's listening to this and they're feeling fired up, they're ready to make Redbubble work for them, what are the key takeaways? Okay, so first and foremost, know your audience. Right. Who are you creating for? Exactly. What are their interests? Where do they hang out online? Once you have a clear picture of your target market, you can tailor your designs and your marketing to resonate with them. Makes sense. What else? Content is king. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one before. And for good reason. High quality photos of your designs are crucial, but it's not just about the visuals. Those product descriptions matter too. Ah, right, the little blurbs of text. Don't underestimate their power. Yeah. Use them to tell a story, share your inspiration, even inject a little humor. So like, channel my inner comedian. Exactly. Make people remember you. Got it. Content, check. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Finally, and this is a big one, don't be afraid to experiment and adapt. The Redbubble landscape is always changing. New trends emerge, algorithms get tweaked. The key is to stay curious, try new things, and see what works best for you in your art. So it's all about embracing that growth mindset. You got it. And remember, you don't have to do it all perfectly from day one. Permission to learn as I go. Yes, Exactly. Give yourself grace, sell us the wins, and never stop creating. Such great advice. And that's a wrap on our Red Bubble Deep Dive. We've explored the ins and outs of this popular platform from the technical stuff to the emotional side of putting your art out there for the world to see. We hope this deep dive has given you the knowledge and inspiration to take your art to the next level. Absolutely. So until next time, happy designing.